so this video this video is kind of interesting um i don't think you've do you know anything about this video no okay I'm this also is concerned with what you have paused on my screen right now. <laughs> oh I, buddy I oh buddy it doesn't get any better let me do it <laughs> okay. okay this this video so has this had what it is a hundred thousand views in 12 days and uh you know this creator he's relatively like up and coming in this quasi fire i uh, apparently that's how you pronounce it um but yeah, like this, this is a big call out video and I kind of am interested to see your perspective on this. Okay. This is going to be good then. It's, it's, uh, this guy is exactly what you expect. He's going to sound like, by the way. Okay. So <laughs> don't, don't think that it's going to get better when he starts talking. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> I'll make sure captions are on. <laughs> oh my Lord. That is some juicy drama. Here, piggies, come on, piggies, get that slop. Yummy slop here. Come on, piggies, get that slop. Mm -mm, that's some good slop right there. You're kind of a fat piggy, ain't you? Many years ago, the face of YouTube and drama specifically was. What's your what's your opening thoughts here, Jim? <laughs> well, see, he's not doing anything that I haven't thought already. Yeah. My kid what, used to watch Peppa Pig and like the idea of barbecuing that bitch. Did like, you uh, always wanted to barbecue that bitch? While I'm paused right here, did you see the background? Is that Vosh? There's a uh, Turkey Tom on the right. There's Pyro Cynical in the next to Turkey Tom. Um, I believe Keemstar and then Vosh. I think Vosh is the horse for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, easy. You got your news from reputable sources like fat man behind tree and balding gnome and you got your fix of child bullying from british teenagers and 30 year old white dudes but now in current Jesus, year so scarce right. is a skinny tw <laughs> right right, wow, so right. like, this like is... i didn't even realize how right he is but dude yeah. <laughs> like, it actually kind of hurts this like... cuts deep this cuts really fucking deep for his <laughs> the video that it is <laughs> Like, he said King that Star subtlety. Is milking a lol cat. By the way, this edit's fucking beautiful. <laughs> I think Medicare needs to use this in the next stream. <laughs> the Keemstar dancing in the background. Scarce is a skinny twink. Keemstar is milking a lol cow. I'm in tremendous pain! I'm in tremendous pain! Help me! Help me! Help me! And Leafy ate every other commentary channel <laughs> and in their place it's hundreds <laughs> if not thousands of what can only be described as slop channels locked in a perpetual race to be the first to a topic no matter if the information they're regurgitating from someone else is accurate or not all that matters is that you're first for all of their faults and all fucking righteous fucking mishaps the channels of <laughs> this guy can cut a pretty fucking good video I don't care. Like this, this hurt. This is a deep cut, but very true. I mean, yeah, and his editing is actually fun too. That, that's what I'm saying. Like this, this, this video cuts harder because his fucking, his fucking edit is fucking amazing. Yeah, it, and it's, it's solid as hell too. Yeah, like, like he's not wrong with what he's saying either. It's right down here, Teddy. It's uh, this blase here. I'll, I'll open it up so you guys can see it bigger. But yeah, this is a channel. I mean. 40, 40 videos, like, this this guy hits. I mean, he's got some other videos that I'm going to check out. But, yeah, this X versus Y, uh, y situation. Uh, apparently, he's got a bit of a, a bit of an axe to grind on the Turkey Tom, which might be why he knew his name. Because um, that's where I found this. I found this on, on fucking uh, one of Turkey Tom's streams. It was brought up by a chatter. And... Uh, yeah, but I I mean this guy's yeah it's three years back but it looks like he's just started doing content again in the past like what five months like yeah. he's he's a little inconsistent but but good they're short videos too and he talks about that that's the funny thing like I kind of felt a little personal call out I'm not gonna lie with the length of my streams <laughs> but 
You know what? What, you mean going live <laughs> for 11 hours? Yeah, because yeah, we, yeah. we fair use the hell out of shit? Yes, <laughs> I'm very fair. I, I, straight, I really pull the fair along at <laughs> a fair use. <laughs> Nine I, times out I of ten, I don't even get to use by the time I'm done with fair. <laughs> I'd love to see you go to court and be like, your honor, like... There is literally nothing in the market that this replaces because we have three hours of rambling in between. No one that wants to know why Mr. Beast is a pedophile is going to sit through three hours of rambling about vehicles. Your Honor, you're like... Uh, we did, what was the fucking stream? Oh, Ralph, where we just stopped in the middle of the stream and talked about computers for two hours. And then we went into like analog horror, which is where like our other side show was birthed. Yeah. <laughs> in a way, Ralph is kind of our internet daddy. <laughs> yeah, but instead of falling comatose on stream, we just go on side tangents. <laughs> you know, I think that's probably better than like almost asphyxiating on our yeah, own. It's like... better for our health, probably in the longer run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least had the decency to do the most basic of research, and more importantly, for the most part respected the viewers time but in today's rush to get as many views and money as possible everyone has replaced genuine research and entertaining content for padding guys say i can't be making this up anymore i'm done check this out standing next to chris tyson and dr disrespect moist shittical some bordinary gamers and as much as it hurts me to say Rap live. How's it rapping, everyone? Fat Bang here. Do you even know who Brap Live is? I didn't even have never heard of this dude. Yeah, I know. I have not either. It, it, he kind of's got it like here. Let me let me play it. Furry vibes. <laughs> so it's oh. like uh oh. um. <laughs> Maybe this is a sector of content that I'm missing out on. Is there's furry commentators? I mean, oh. I I can bridge the gap, Jim. I no. can bring the look. It's not gonna be any the worse. Gap for a reason, Patrick. <laughs> it's not gonna be any fucking worse than the guy that fucked the Twinkie. Yeah, I can't. I can't argue that point. Like, I can't. Anything. Argue anything that. from here is a trade up. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, you're right. Like, I, 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 I would love to debate you, but like, I literally can't. So, like, I don't, I don't really have an argument because, like, when we get to fucking baked goods and like, you know, fucking Jello molds and shit, like, we're, we're, yeah. You know, I would even go as far as to say the furries are ahead of us because they've already, they've already like thinned out the herd, so to speak, pun intended. Of these people, like, we know who they are in their groups. Like, there was the dude that I brought to Huggy that fucked a pizza and ate a slice. Like, they've already ousted that person. They've, they've evolved past food fucking before we did. Dear God. <laughs> are, we the, are we the furry, then? We're behind like, the we... curve here. We're the... Yeah, like, when we used to make fun of furries for being, like... <laughs> You know. we're, we're on the spectrum and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are okay. many words being said throughout these commentary videos, reaction videos, live stream clips, cancer, and yet somehow they convey nothing. Put on a blindfold, cover yourself in oil, and throw a dart at anything that could be considered drama. And there has been 500 videos made on it in the first hour, and yet somehow it's still old news. If there are parts of this I very much fucking agree with too, by the way. Like the whole like as a viewer, the the fucking everybody and their brother covering the same t subject for me always fucking annoyed the shit out of me. Because like if I didn't like that subject, I had fuck all to watch that week. Yeah, and you know what's funny is they often reiterate the same point with like yes! without any deviation. Like it's it sometimes it feels like they were all like in a group chat, right? Like being like, all right, so what are, <laughs> what are our talking points? And then they all just like copy and paste it and write a yes. script around that. 
or it doesn't feel like anyone's saying anything unique or different or adding to the situation adding any new information doing any research or anything they're all covering the same fucking video they're all going oh uh, well and and that's about it like they they add and he actually touches on it like he's like they add like their 12 seconds of fucking actual solid information plus their own padding to draw out a fucking situation to actually get the same information out there that I could have went and watched somewhere else b- probably beforehand. Yeah. Like, and that's why I try to cover different shit because I know how frustrating it is as a viewer. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, you know, and it's like, thankfully, like, you know, not to bring it back around, but like the Echo thing happened because I was starting to get burned out with the Bo Black stuff. Yeah, because the Bo Black stuff sucks. You know, it's a dumb, like... it's dumb, and it's them taking points that they fucking sit there and have argued against everybody else, and suddenly not applying it to themselves. I mean, again, a, a lot of shit this guy is saying is fucking accurate. Yeah. Like, you can hate it, you can laugh at it, you, whatever, but, like, he did it in a concise way. This is only, a, it's under eight minutes, right? So, he did it concisely. He, he uh he's calling out all this shit now mind you i disagree with him on the long form content i like long form content personally and that's why i make it like i i like having stuff to listen to the next day yeah, like, in the background or like when you're driving yeah, and stuff. yeah like... and honestly guess what that's what all your fucking youtubers do they're listening to this shit on these streams in the background they aren't paying attention to what's on the screen most of the time honestly they aren't. Ouch. Called me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not playing a game right now. <laughs> no. But, like, that's why they're not adding anything to this. I've told you before. Like, how many times have I told you I watch a video when I'm interested in covering it for, a con- for like, a subject? Yeah. Like, I-, I watch it typically. I've got to watch something. And I, that's me, like, eyes on watching it, maybe listening to it once, about three times. Because I'll hear stuff, and then I'll pick up on more stuff. And, like, I go, like, layers deep. By the third time, <clears throat> I know what I'm going to say to you guys before I ever step foot in here to do a stream. It's all done. I, I don't need a docket. I don't need anything. I've seen this three times. I actually know it by heart. Probably know it better than they do, and they made it like well maybe not that good but (laughs) yeah honestly probably because half these people don't even do their own shit they sit down they record (laughs) and they pass it off to an editor like they don't even they hardly make their own content they're just the spokesperson for a content mill yeah true sorry i was also i was also reading teddy's teddy's stuff in chat (laughs) quote the great philosopher known as cm punk tell me when i'm telling lies yeah like and it's it's, you know it's like not really like it's i mean even like because i know you like tom how many editors does tom have now oh god yeah his own stuff i would find it really easy to believe that he would forget about a topic a week or two after he did it because it's just the next make the next video make the next video make the next video yeah youtube has become a business now and then it's yeah it very it much is because it used to be youtube broadcast yourself now it's youtube broadcast to 10 minutes to get max ad rolls and broadcast you know the new hello fresh ad raid yeah like, yeah yeah and that's why like i i you know what as much as like i would love to go out and i would love to pick up sponsors and stuff like that i probably could pull in and get people like who the fuck wants to sit through that shit all the fucking time i don't i i i i I would have a hard time like and i know i'm getting paid reading this and i feel like i was wasting your time nobody cares nobody gives a shit you know how many fucking services exist for ad blocking and now they want to put ads when you're paused did you see that yeah i'm like and and did you see the response of like hyper monetized channels when they saw that they saw fucking yeah. dollar signs they don't <laughs> they're adding another revenue stream too yes like i'm like what it's like we already have super thanks now like you're making yeah. it 
it, it, it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, you're just subsidizing us paying your content creators. You're basically like, it, it's like tip culture worldwide now, right? Yeah. Like a lot of people, like if you ever see it, there's actually a huge debate it, of it now. Where tips like, are included oh. with everything when you go to even check out. Well, yeah, and, like, a lot of, like, foreign people are, like, speaking out on American tipping culture and saying that it's actually offensive because, like, tips shouldn't – you shouldn't be expected to do a good job to get extra money. The business should be paying you, right? Like, and that should be a business expense. And it's actually interesting to see, like, YouTube kind of going down that way where it's, like, they don't want to work on, like, revenue streams and getting advertisers they want the content creator to go out and get the sponsors they want the content creator to go do the work and then they just take those they're happy skimming 30 percent off the top then yeah like, yeah they they honestly are like it's just uh i'm gonna keep playing it's it's a short video but i know we're gonna get fair use out of it so but i want <laughs> i want you to see the other shit he says like it, it, it raised a lot of fucking valid points <clears throat> As I type sp space in chat instead of hit For play. For some reason that you're <laughs> unaware, popular Fortnite skin Jimmy Beast is in a bit of hot water. For what? Who knows? Because the Mr. Beast drama got complicated and he like, just destroyed this. his career and it's getting worse for him and the allegations are worse than ever and his career is actually over ad nauseum, ad infinitum forever exposed mr beast the problem is not with people calling out jimmy crones at least they're bringing in new information the most basic level of effort and are making somewhat interesting content if it is true or not that is yet to be seen because i cannot afford to be sued the problem is with all of the vultures that <laughs> i feel that <laughs> yeah. speaking of that i'm glad he brought that up because that's a point i want to bring up now is like you know he's be mr beast is being sued by uh for mr beast games now finally yep i seen that yeah i actually had to watch legal mindset yeah to actually get it because all of the people that were calling out the, the chris tyson stuff didn't bother to like actually read any of it and it's sad that like you know i'm i wasn't even looking for a legal analysis i just wanted to hear news on it that i had to go to a legal analysis to get the news on it yeah yeah well i just what do i want to say here okay i have not covered the most recent dog pack video because there's a lot that's been brought into question about it and rather than purvey information that I'm still trying to surmise whether it's valid or not, um, there is valid information in that. And there is another portion that I also want to add to that, that uh, I was contacted by some Kiwi farmers. Don't mind saying it. And these Kiwi farmers have gone on and done some serious fucking investigation into Chris Tyson and into Mr. Beast. And I want to kind of, at some point, cover probably that video, um, probably the Chris Tyson thing, and maybe uh, Mr. Beast's response if we ever get one, kind of together. Because I feel like we've varied away from this so much. Like, how do I want to say this? I think that um, we've detracted so much from the subject that, like, we no longer are even going after the bad actors here. We're literally making up bad actors. Like, do I like Jake Weddle? Fuck no. I think he's a fucktard. I think he's a scumbag. I think he's a scammer. I think he's pulling the wool over fucking people's eyes. And I've said this. Do I think Dogpack is a fucking good person? I don't fucking know. I think he kind of rushed shit on this last fucking video and did some stuff that can be pointed as like, you fucked up here, buddy. But you know what? Other fucking people have done the same shit. <laughs> and sometimes the people that are criticizing him somewhat have done the same shit. Yes. So they're kind of an expert on it. Yes. Like, yeah. And then we get into the whole hypocrisy thing. So it's like, okay, so now we're, now we're going to go after and persecute the guy that did actually, for whatever, better or worse, however you want to fucking say it, call out legitimate pedophiles that were legitimately hired by jimmy i yeah, mean and knowing they're, they're, obviously they're, they had a there's, fucking dinner with him like, there's very clear fucking points here that like you cannot like take away from 
and I feel like by the time by sitting there and arguing and sitting there and ad nauseum, like he said, uh, like Fozzie Fair said here, like ad nauseum going at somebody, you're you're just taking away from that whole argument. Because now, like, when I look at certain people's chats, all they want to do is fucking grab the pitchforks and the torches and go after fucking dog pack and this fucking spurgy woman witness whatever chick. Oh my God. And like, okay, great. You can do that. But what happened to, like, the stuff that matters over here? Like, are we just going to fucking forget about it? Right. And... and... <laughs> You know my feelings on the the failed lawyer, like yeah. I've told you, and 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 I've told you why I specifically dislike her. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to get into it. But uh, like, that'll be a whole tangent on its own. We'll get into it at some point. <laughs> yeah, I'll just break it down. Of <clears throat> she did stuff with Bam, who is um, Bam Majera, obviously of Jackass, who is has a lot of um substance issues. And she basically just was like, no, don't listen to people do whatever you want. And sort of like encouraging him to continue like basically using and like that's fucked. But like, I think if we're going to criticize her, maybe we should do it specifically for her. And yeah. Not off the back of like pedophile bad. And oh, by the way, this person's also doing this and that person's doing that. And like make your actual like own criticisms and takedowns on their own time. Here's another like, unpopular opinion. There are certain commentary creators that really don't like, um, what's his name or what's her name? Uh, Rosanna Pansino. They really don't fucking like her. They've been very outspoken about her. And another thing that they've said in tangent to this is that, Hey, this shit should be handed off to news source. So then when you have Rosanna Pansino sitting on, what was it? NBC or ABC or whatever fucking news organization it was talking about this shit and now it's being brought to journalists suddenly it's oh well not her like the fuck guys like now you're going to be picky and choosy about oh well we wanted it to go to reputable news sources we wanted this handed off but now we don't like who's doing the handing off and who's the front person now well i i i, I kind of understand that perspective like one mainstream media isn't exactly trustworthy i mean just you can look at like um he had his own controversies, but, like, with Ace Arch and the Onision documentary, right? Like, there was a lot of shit like that. That Like, it came out on Chud Logic stream that, like, he didn't actually support that yeah. post-release and stuff like that because of the way Chris Hansen, a former other media person, acted, right? So yeah. it's like, I, I, I understand, like, you wanted to get to the right people, but one, Ros uh, Rosanna, I hate her. But like, <laughs> like, I hate her too. Um, be but she is bitter and has a bias. Like, so oh, I yeah. can understand, like, yeah. maybe wanting to be like, well, let's get somebody without a bias, right? To represent this to somebody that's, you know, actual people. But then when you look at your journalist and, like, okay, like, who do you go to? Taylor Lorenz? Oh, yeah. Well okay. Here, that, that. what about the fucking guy with the Dr. Disrespect thing? That was a legitimate journalist. And that guy was trying to fucking what? Sell a hot, hot tickets for a fucking concert or some shit? Yeah, well, he wasn't a journalist. He was, but he was, he handed it off to a journalist after um he tried to hawk his, like, concert tickets. But then, like, that <clears> also <throat> brings out to it, like, journalist. Do you know who else was a journalist and somebody I used to like? Who? Blasher. Yeah. Blasher. Rod, Rod Breslau was... I used to watch him back during the StarCraft days when he did his podcast with DJ Wheat. Because DJ Wheat had a StarCraft podcast called uh, Inside... It was either State of the Game or Inside the Game. One of those two that he used to do it on. And I, I really liked that because back then he was a journalist. He was covering, like... He was like a sports journalist for esports, right? Yeah. Team Liquid hired this person. You know, Evil Geniuses dropped this person. This person leaves. Like, back then there was a lot of that, but now he's become almost like a Taylor Lorenz style TMZ journalist. So at the end of the day, when you say you want to hand it off to the right journalist, well, who's deciding who this? Well, like, this is my big question. The journalists, the, the mainstream journalists are worse. Then, like, the, you know, 
I would rather you hand it off to Carl Jobs. To... <laughs> At least Carl you know, knows yeah. his shit. Yeah. You know, Carl puts in more effort. You know, and I know that Mudahar is on the on the agenda today. Yeah. Too, but like, <laughs> he is with the completionist. He did his shit. Carl oh, yeah. Godzilla does his shit. So like when you when you say you want to hand it off to the a journalist, when some of these YouTubers like Muda and Coffee and Carl have more journalistic integrity, integrity than and journalists now. Yeah. yeah. Because now journalists literally are just glorified Twitter verses. Who are you to now decide that yeah. Taylor Lorenz is the person to pass it to? Or Slash is the person to pass it to? Right? Yeah, like, you're making agree. these arguments. You're making these arguments handed off to the right people. Well, the people that you want to hand it off to, the journalists, haven't been the right people for a decade now. Yep. I don't know that there is right people. And it's just funny, like, how the... I think it's goalpost shifting. When you sit there and you say, like, hand this off to this, hand this off to this person, hand this off to this person. Like, these people are in, inadequate, inept, to whatever the fuck you want to say. And I don't necessarily disagree with that statement but at the same time like you can't say broad statements like that and then be picky in hindsight like you can't you can't sit there and just be like hand it off to anybody anybody's better than this person and then when that literally fucking happens then it's ah, ah, you know what i mean well yeah when you have people out here like fucking alex rosen who isn't a journalist doing more better work yeah. Than Chris Hansen, who's a journalist. Yeah. Who the and... fuck? How how do you determine who the right person is? Because these people that are classically trained, right, are no longer that. Yeah. Now. They're activists. No. I'm gonna keep playing this. We'll get through it. Add no value and just regurgitate what the original video was saying, adding nothing new but their own voices and sweaty face cam. I use the Mr. Beast situation as an example because it is by far the funniest amount of content milking. By the way, this More Pegasus channel, like, I was, I, I don't know who I was watching. I don't know if it was Sensitive Society that I was watching. I think it might have been somebody else towards the beginning of this with the whole Mr. Beast stuff, like, well before even the whole Jake Weddle video came out. And this guy had, like, nine videos already on Mr. Beast. So, and they all are like this. Like, I, I do agree <laughs> that having this and, like, milking a topic and be literally beating the dead horse anytime a new tiny iota of information comes out, it's kind of detracts from video. the value. It's a 10 minute video to add 20 seconds worth of new information. Yes. It, at at and, minimum, because that's what these people that want the ad rolls and stuff. If they don't go in and they don't take and make it a 30 minute video by recounting all the stuff from the other previous videos in that video. So realistically, you're not even having to watch nine videos. You can watch one video. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Let me ask you this too. If I put one of those videos in front of you, and I would blur out who made it. Could you tell the difference between who made what? I don't think you necessarily could in some standards. No. Because, like, if you look, look, the top right of Sensitive Society looks exactly almost like the middle one yeah. for Pegasus. Same color. Drab gray. Red lettering over the, the shocking word. Yep. yep. You know, big, b bold, bricked yeah. lettering. It, it's funny that you like, say that because he actually gets into that, too. Yeah, look, look, in Sensitive Society, look, the Ava picture, same fucking picture. Yep. It's over on the right, right right across from it, same picture. Yep. From Sensitive Society, like, so, like, content mills, they're it, content mills now. It really is. I have ever seen, but it is by no means the only example. The sketch situation is insane. Right here. The Sneeko situation is crazy. This guy ruined his career. She's over. It's done. Buzzword. 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 All different videos with vast... And part of that, I blame on YouTube. Partially. Okay? Because, like, YouTube has the search engine optimization, and, like, if you're wanting to get anywhere as a creator, like, all my most recent videos that haven't really done well, there's no SEO on them. Um, I've reused the same rinse and repeat tags and everything else. Like I've put no effort 
into my videos. Like if you support the channel, I appreciate it. If you like the videos, you watch the videos, you leave comments. I still try to read through comments and everything else, but like, I'm not putting in the effort, but if you do put in the effort, your, your content looks like this. Go look at like my past, like months worth of content before, before this, like it, it, it looks like that. Anything from say June, July, all, all looks like that. So, you know, part of it is, uh, I feel it lays at the feet of blame for YouTube. Well, it's the algorithm. Yeah. It's it's just the fact that, like, everything needs to be so algorithmically stable that they're creating a meta, like a meta game for it. Like, yeah. And that's, that's killing the diversity of what content you can make and what thumbnails you can make. Because, like, if you want a scene... You have to like do it a certain way and have the certain buzzworded titles. Like, yep. and th- th- I agree that's an issue. Yeah, but yeah, like if you use something like VidIQ and you go in there, it actually rates like your thumbnail. It'll give you a separate rating for that. That changes depending on your title. So it actually takes the combination package of here's your thumbnail, here's your title. Now they even had the feature that recently rolled out where it's like, okay, try two different thumbnails, see which is more successful. Like. Everything is about getting a polished corporate video in front of the slop consumer chatter, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, it's, it's that, so it's that like, old meme, right? Um, not to cut you off. No, sorry. no, you're fine. But uh, but like that meme, like consume product, then get excited for additional product. Yes. Yes. Like. Yeah, this is very much a situation of like. <laughs> You know, Some content. I'll get excited for additional content. Yes. Like, yeah, and you know, so I don't necessarily blame the creators. I can blame the creators for slow drip cover each minutia that comes out instead of like I don't know, wait a little bit, cover it all at once. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's all just me. Tro gets the fact that like it comes out a year or two retrospective that covers yeah. an entire situation front to back. Like it's actually refreshing that you can sit down for an hour and just watch this is what happened versus like one of the content mills where you're watching three, four, five, six hours and you're getting the same amount of information because half of it needs to be stretched out with ad reads and shit. And it's being reiterated and it's, you know, like because each time they're going to treat it like somebody's not watched any of the previous videos. So like you're consuming repetitive content to some extent. Yeah. I agree. I mean, that's how I've learned as much as I've learned about, oh God, YouTube and YouTube creators and stuff like that was watching, you know, the video SAS, the Turkey Toms, the Tro, the, um, oh God, why am I blanking on his name? J. Aubrey, uh, people like that. Like these guys used to do it too. Who? Preming. Yeah. Before he got stalked. Like, yeah. And I mean, like, you know, (laughs) <laughs> there's there's something to be said about that and i i like it i i rather learn that and then you kind of get you kind of get a distilled version of the content you get everything you need without all the bullshit you don't want where if you like you go back and you go through playlists and that's that's what makes it hard and that's probably why a lot of people don't know about you know different content from the past because like if you have to go through like creator a's playlist and find video a and then go through creators b's playlist find video a and then go back to creator a's playlist find video c like doing that it's awful yeah and by the end of it you know what i know <laughs> not much more <laughs> that i can save 30 percent with this coupon code with hello fresh and that it makes <laughs> it gives me easy to produce meals in my hectic busy life because that's the only fucking thing that's consistent. Yeah. Because the HelloFresh and, and and the thing that really annoys me too, I get making money, mm-hmm. but when you do the ad reads, they are carbon copy. I do you use the product? I can't tell. Yeah. Because it feels so like you know my favorite ads, like the one ad I watched, it was an entire sponsored video. It was an ASMR video, right? Yeah. She made the Hello Fresh meal. See, that's clever. That's what I. That, that was good because it's like, oh, cool. 
yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you know, the ASMR tingly like I'm supposed to, right? But you're actually utilizing the product, and I actually know you did it. Yeah. But when you have, like, <laughs> you know, some woman coming out here about Dollar Shave Club, <laughs> what? <laughs> No, see, like, the ones I actually appreciate, you wonder who I really like for ad reads, probably the best out of everybody, Willie Mac. That man has been clever yeah. enough that you don't know when you're in the ad role until yeah. he really starts putting the product on screen sometimes. Internet historian makes it a skit. Yeah. That are always, that's always funny. You know, stuff like that I like. Yeah. When you're like, hey, like, guys. I'm here to tell you about HelloFresh. You know you can save 30% off with using my coupon code content creator. <laughs> they have 80 meals that you can choose from. And if you use my code today, you get 50% off your first box and 30% off your order. And if you act now, you can get free breakfast. Do you know, wow. you know what it reminds me of? The old infomercials for that we got no, growing up. No, no, even more funny than that. Going back to my favorite game, Spacer's Choice is the best choice. <laughs> yeah, right. I thought you were gonna go down the route that like we would get like back, you know, since we're old as hell, like the three a.m. UBC ads on like Sci-Fi Channel. Remember that sort of stuff, like with Billy Mays and Bro. Slap Chop Guy. Like, yeah, that 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 will never go away from my memory. They're calling content me now, Miss Cleo. <laughs> yeah, content creators have become yeah. dime store wannabe Billy Mays. Yeah. Because they don't even have the personality. Well, yeah, it's surrounded by rape allegations. Did you, that's exactly what I want. Yeah, did you know that this dude fucked a 12-year-old and you know what else is fucked? This flight seal guy. Did... For spending all of this meal. But you can stop that with buying, like, you know, HelloFresh. Can you imagine you know, the like... my pillow guy or the flex seal dude with his fucking, uh, his door-bottomed boat? talking about fucking rape allegations because we're not far yeah. off from that <laughs> well basically yeah it's like you know what and at the end of the day here this 12 year old was, that was fucked by a minecraft youtuber is gonna need a lot of therapy that's why i'm glad to bring to you today better help <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah okay sure Just surround rape allegations with a fucking shady therapy company well and you know there's also there's also like something to be said too about it i think and it's yeah uh, i'm trying to think of how to say this i think it's kind of funny too how many times have these advertisers like you just brought up better health and all that paid out a lot of money and you do all these ad reads and then it comes out that it's a big fucking scam in some way shape or form remember the the what was it the own your plot of land in scotland or something become a lord or a lady Oh, the um, uh, established titles. Yes, established titles. Which it even says in the fine print, but none of the creators read the fine print. No, no. So then it they all got caught with their pants down. <laughs> Phil Swift, yes. <laughs> hey, Phil Swift here. <laughs> oh, God. Like, it, it's just, you know, at least this tangent, though, is on topic. <laughs> you, you know what? Rob Dyke was really good at ad reads. I, I really, you know, I like Dyke's content, too. He he was really good. And that, uh, that, that was that was some fucking, do you, you know him at all? Who I'm yeah, I was going to make a joke about, like, wow, you like Dyke content? Yeah, yeah, Regist, you know. Man. <laughs> look, you know? look, by the standard of commentary, I'm fucking normal. <laughs> yeah, at least you're not... yeah, that's true. It's like I watch my adult material with women, with two women. I don't fuck bagels. Like, like some people, I I have a I have a legitimate to my degeneracy. <laughs> you know, I choose a zero zero sugar sex life. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right? When you're Wilfred Brimley crossovers with fucking. You know, your king fetish. Oh, man. Oh, shit. I just went off in a totally different fucking part of my mind. You know Echo a Tragedy would totally get off to some fucking Gordon Ramsay kink shame porn. Oh, my God. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and then we put it in like that. No, you fucking little donut. I told you to What am I? An idiot bit. sandwich? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like, almost. 
almost like a like a food fin dom, like fucking Gordon Ramsay. Oh, it's God. like no, not that much seasoning, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Don't <laughs> get on the floor and lick it. <laughs> right now, lick it up. You like that? Ah, oh, you dirty. <laughs> Can you just imagine? Call me Daddy Gordon. <laughs> Gigi came in at the right time. <laughs> What's up? How's, how you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling a little bit better. Good, good, good. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Gordon Ramsay kink shame food porn? Who? Echoes? Well, no, just in general, we've come up with the idea of Gordon Ramsay kink shame food porn. <laughs> you know what? It says a lot that we can say that without any prompting. He knows exactly what the topic is. <laughs> without I mean, any... South... I mean, South Park made a whole episode about it. Remember when Randy became the school chef? No. I totally forgot that. Holy fuck. I inadvertently stole South Park now. Literally, they had Carmen and a bunch of stilts dressed up as Gordon Ramsay harassing Randy. It's like, it's not good enough, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking it up, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna get on, get on with this so we can get through this one. <laughs> Topics, but the exact same content. Reading tweets, reading Reddit posts, reacting to someone else's video. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a lot like watching someone react to yeah, a the crossover that you chose tonight. But... Huh? The through line with all the stuff you chose tonight. <laughs> like, like, it's all, like, she, like, was that intentional? Or, like, no. Was that, or was that, like, echo of tragedy, just an accident? Yeah, it was It was an echo of tragedy. <laughs> God damn. It's through the lens of irony. That is somewhat entertaining. <laughs> if all you're doing is a plot summary anyway, at least have the decency to actually summarize it. You know, make it shorter instead of I would just agree saying with that. what's already been said, but again. Now it is disingenuous of me to say that all commentary channels within this niche are just plot summaries. Only most of them are. There are some that do add things that, in a vacuum, would be considered a net positive. They add their own personality, their own jokes, their opinions that, although sit directly on the fence and are completely and utterly unchallenging, are at I least there. God. And on paper, if he shows a clip of uh, fucking what's his name, the fat electrician in this, <laughs> I don't believe he's... he does. He was going after the actual upper echelons of of commentary. Yeah, because that dude actually does pretty good ad reads. <laughs> paper that sounds great but in practice it is merely a disguise to hide the fact that a 30 minute video is saying 20 seconds of substance hello guys and gals it's me mudahar there's a guy live streaming himself trying to break the world record for staying awake he's pretty far in it's kind of dangerous if you try this you're probably gonna die pee pee fart poo poo come the fact that he does this and like shows how quickly he can summarize their entire fucking videos is in like seconds. The personality seconds. breakdown is just yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. It's critical oh, here. Man. A streamer set her kitchen on fire on live stream, and if you do that, your house could burn down. Oi oi! The Minecraft movie trailer just released. Looks <laughs> a bit shite in it. Clickbait is nothing new, and it's not going away. But it has evolved into a creature of unknown, uncontrollable His fucking magnitude. edits are so good. Long right? This is a fucking engaging like, ass video, I will say that. Like, I actually minimize my game and I'm like actually engaged with it, which is actually a massive compliment because like, as you know, I hardly like watch content, I listen to it. Yeah. So the fact that you could actually tear me away from what I'm doing is a massive compliment. Yeah, normally the only way I get Jim to watch content is I just disturb him enough with what I'm watching. <laughs> Jim, since, you, since you now remember that episode of South Park, do you know what the B plot was to it? No. It okay. was <laughs> it was about Randy's wife getting a shake weight. And the joke about it was just masturbation. Oh, okay, yeah, no, <laughs> like, where they had that song, like, Shake on My Face and stuff. 
I oh don't think God. they had that. <laughs> oh my it God. was like it I was remember the it now. was running parallel to what Randy should have done, <laughs> or what he was doing with the food for. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember that now because like at the end, doesn't the shake wait leave and you're like, you don't need me anymore, like yeah, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it sprays some kind of cooling liquid on your face and it gives yeah. you cab fare. <laughs> <laughs> Long ago, most clickbait was bad but at least it was memorable now even after watching an entire video within this genre i can't recall the title the thumbnail or even what the video was about it might be because i'm getting old and will die soon or it could be because they are all so vague and generic that they leave me with no impression and as soon as they're <laughs> over their memory instantly exits my brain <laughs> I, I totally pause Andy that. To <laughs> what? I totally pause Andy that like 35 minutes ago. The blank situation is blank. Dot, dot, dot is the current meta for getting free views on YouTube. And if it's not the X situation is Y dot dot dot, then it is a string of words that is extremely vague, barely relating to the topic, that I would hesitate to call a title. These are sentences that of course <laughs> end in dot fucking dot. And it is extremely cancerous. It has spread far and wide. Again, I feel like this is a fucking problem caused by the algorithm, caused by YouTube. This is SEO issues. But yes, it does exist. Yes. I mean, fucking look up X subject like he's saying, and you will get the X versus Y statements that he's well, talking about. It's come like full circle. Before, people would use like the dot, dot, dot for emphasis, even yeah. though it's an ellipsis. It's supposed to be a pause in time yes. before you drop the next part of the sentence yes yeah yeah it's it's a well, that, that, that's what people used to do in youtube comments now they're doing it in the titles of their videos it, so. it was an accentuation factor to like a, a mic drop moment a bomb drop whatever you want to call it yeah and affects even the most reputable of channels and it's an immediate red flag that the content you're about to consume is low effort unentertaining slop i respect the hustle get that bag Flace Fire OnlyFans is expensive, but as long as the collective IQ of the general YouTube consumer base remains that of a misshapen carrot, talk to a. No amount of me whining and complaining like a little. Yeah, you guys should be angry. He called y'all fucking misshapen carrots. I'm just saying. If you didn't catch that, Yo. you're all misshapen carrots. Jokes <laughs> on him. I'm fat, so I'm a potato. <laughs> I'm short and I'm fat, so I'm more of a potato, so joke's on him. I, I am I am gonna refrain from identifying as any food just per the previous subject. Little bitch is gonna change anything. So How's it going everyone? Flaze fire here. And this drama situation is crazy. I shit it in my pants. <laughs> so Flaze Fire. But yeah, I would go check him out. He, he looks like he's got a bunch of fucking interesting videos. I definitely fucking strongly agree with this fucking video like i i thought it was such an accurate call out and then like you said jim like the editing is fucking on fucking point it is he's good like i he's got this it this is who should be the next up and comer not a certain person that's been <laughs> involved in having a bad week <laughs> oh man uh, yeah, I just, I, I I like the edit. I like the speed of the video. I mean, he had a lot of content in there for the seven minutes that we covered. I mean, shit, we've covered, like he says, longer videos that have said less. I mean, fuck, it, even if we, okay, like, this may come off as, like, a total fucking asshole fucking statement. But, like, even the fucking, uh, the original Chris Tyson video, what more was really added from the video that, uh, what was it, that uh, Brion did, that was a basic, like, a little adaptation on top of the fucking 
Prism 42 fuck up video. Still don't like you, dude. Like, there there wasn't a whole lot added. <laughs> I mean, he actually put it in a more logical sense than the fucking Spazoid did with his fucking original video. But what what can I honestly say? Like, there wasn't anything Brion did that was memorable. Right. And as far as information, there's been times that we've been live that we've actually discovered things that weren't in the video we were reacting to. Yeah. Of stuff that should have been in that video because it was days old. Yes. <laughs> like, and we just found it by literally pulling a Taylor Lorenz and opening Twitter. Yeah. Like it wasn't like we had to like interview people or go out and do like extra work. Like it was right there in the public eye. Yeah, no. Like it wasn't hard to find. It wasn't hiding under a rock. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like especially the the rich thing with Kino like really stands out to me for that. Yeah. Like it was in plain sight. The whole time. How long? Like yeah. years. Years. Fucking years. 